I invite you to stand at this time. The Bible states in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with thee, and be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with my victorious right hand. Remain standing as we open in a word of prayer. Let's bow our hearts and our heads this afternoon. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this afternoon, Father, we thank you for being a gracious God. We thank you for being a God that we can call upon any time of the day. I know, Father, that you would hear us, God, you would answer us, and you would attend, Lord, to our every need. Father, I ask that your presence, your blessings, your covering, your peace, would be over this afternoon proceedings, Lord. Father, as the family and dear friends say the well wishes and goodbye, Lord, to the late Winston Stanley Devonish. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would cover. Father, we ask that you would strengthen. Lord, we ask in this season, Lord, that you would uplift them with your victorious right hand. Father, you said in your word that you would never leave us, God, and you would never forsake us. But Father, you will be with us even to the very end of this age. So Lord, in a season of grief, Lord, in a season of bereavement, Father, I pray that they would know that you are with them and you would help them every step of the way. I bless them today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the precious Holy Spirit. Once again, a blessed good afternoon to all. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would like to say on behalf of the leaders and the members of Come As You Are Family Ministries, the church I currently pastor, we would like to offer our heartfelt condolences to the family and the friends of the late Winston Devonish. Remain standing as we now sing the processional hymn, Blessed Assurance. And those of you who are viewing online, God bless you and thank you for being with us this afternoon.
lest you suffer as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise again. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Sister Margaret. I invite us all once again to stand as we now sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. seated once again. At this time we would have the second scripture reading. We will take in from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 50 to 58 and will be read by brother Dennis Allen. Good evening all. Um, the second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. And I am reading from the New International Version, which is a little different from what is on the program. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does <coughs> perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. 
For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must close itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sin? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The word of God. Thank you, Brother Aline. At this time, we would now have a solo by Shante Price. Good afternoon, everyone. I would first like to express my condolences to the family. Um, the song that I'm going to sing is entitled Trust His Heart, and I think the message will resonate with you well, so I pray that you are blessed and you're touched by this song.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Shante. Man, you can really sing. Glory be to God. Thank you for that rendition this afternoon. And I pray that's a reminder to all of us that when we can't trust his hand, when we can't understand what is happening next, you've got to be able to trust his heart. When you can't trace what is happening next, know that God is in control. Sometimes there are seasons in our life that doesn't make sense and we may not understand what God is doing next. But in those moments when you don't have a pathway to follow, know that God is in control. Know that the plans that he has for you are to prosper you, to give you hope, a future, and an expected end. So in this season, fear not. God is with you. He's going to help you, and he's going to strengthen you every single day. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise the Lord. At this time, we would have a poem by Alicia Allen. Good afternoon, everyone. Right, so this afternoon, I am going to share this poem with you. It was written by Shannon Lee Mosley, and it's called I Am Free. I hope that the poem will give some comfort to my family, especially my grandmother. Um, let me just go ahead. Uh, I am free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wants me now. He set me free. Thank you. Alicia, I'm just getting a slight feedback. Do permit me your undivided attention for the next few minutes as I share a word from the Bible, from God's word. And I pray even as I would minister this word that it would bring a measure of comfort to your hearts. It's never easy to lose a loved one. And I pray that you would know that God is with you in this season. 
let us pray once again. Father, even as I decree and declare your word this afternoon, Lord, I ask right now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, I ask in this season, Lord, once again, you would comfort, you would strengthen, you would garrison around the family and friends, and you would let them know, Father, you are with them. We bless your name, and we say, Father, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Bible states in Luke chapter 24, the gospel is in Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 13 to 21. It states, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four longs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that he have one to another as he walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass therein these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all men, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. I entitle this brief sermonette, Back Down Memory Lane, or On the Road to Emmaus. Presented before us this afternoon, in the scripture is a post-resurrection scene. At present, Jesus is no longer in the tomb, and his disciples, they're sad, they're fearful, they're perplexed, they're gloom. And Jesus appeared unto two of these disciples one day as they were journeying and making themselves on the road to Emmaus. And they were walking and they were talking to each other. They were sad because the Messiah, the Comforter, the person that was with them every step of the way is no longer standing beside them. Uh, they're no longer seeing the miracles. They're no longer receiving the, the fish and the bread. They felt open and helpless in that moment, not realizing that Jesus himself was walking beside them. Verse 13, it states, And behold, the two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about two, three score, four long. Two of them, this speaks of togetherness. It speaks of unity and community. Because any time you lose a loved one, we must never isolate ourselves. But we must be able to draw from the strength from a friend, from a family member. Unity is strength. And the enemy, he loves to isolate us. He loves to place us in a place whereby we cut off community. We cut off our source of help. But any time you are experiencing grief, I encourage you to reach out, connect with a friend, connect with a family member. Do not experience bereavement on your own. It is often said in life that we need three kinds of friendship. We all need a Paul. A Paul is known as a father figure. A Paul is a mentor. A Paul is someone that we can go to in a time of need. Someone that we can share our burdens with. Someone that can pray with us. Someone that can give us a word of encouragement. Someone that can pat us on the back and let us know you can face tomorrow. We all need a Paul in our life. Secondly, we also need a Silas. 
As Silas is known as a friend because the things that you may not want to share with a father, the things you may not want to share with a Paul, you may feel comfortable in sharing with a Silas. A Silas is a friend, someone that can relate to you, someone that may be experiencing the same situation as you, and you can go to that person, you can let your guard down, you can be yourself, and you can share from a place of intimacy with a Silas. And the third form of friendship that we need in life is a Timothy. A Timothy is someone that is looking at us. Someone that is gleaning from our lives day by day. Someone that we are pouring into. Because even in our moments of weakness, in our moments whereby we feel as if we cannot pour into someone, someone is looking at how we are living day by day. And that person is receiving strength. You would say it to yourself, but sometimes I feel as if I cannot go on. And there is someone that is admiring you at the job, a family member in the home, someone in the community. As you live your life day by day, that person is receiving strength from you. So whether there is a Paul, a Silas, or a Timothy in your life, Please understand that we cannot do this life on our own. No man is an island. A wise man once said, if you can talk about it, you can get over it. Let me say that one more time. If you can talk about it, you can get over it. And nothing is wrong in a season of bereavement if you are constantly talking about that family member that meant so much to you, that you can share, you can get it off of your chest, get it out of your system. I encourage you, if you have to speak about it, speak about it, amen? However you choose to grieve, do not allow anyone to make you feel uh, as if you, you should get over it quickly. Some persons experience grief in a different way. Some persons, they remain silent. Others, they cry. Some just want to be in a quiet place. But however you have to get through this season, I encourage you to go through that season of grief. Verse 14, it states, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. The disciples at that point were reflecting and remembering the good moments they had with Jesus. In the same way, after we leave this homegoing service, you would also be reflecting on uh, Brother Winston. You will reflect on the memories, you reflect on the moments that you had with your dear beloved. Some moments would make you laugh. Some moments will make you chuckle. Some moments you may just say, look. But in those moments, I encourage you when they come back to rejoice. And again, I say to you to rejoice and allow yourself to go through every single season. Verse 15, it states, And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. The two disciples, they were walking, talking and communing together, not realizing that Jesus drew near unto them. They did not know that in their season of bereavement, in their season of grief, Jesus was right beside them. What does that say to all of us this afternoon? That in your highest moments, God is beside you. In your lowest moments, he sticketh closer than a friend, closer than a brother. He's right there, just a prayer away. And all you have to do there, beloved, is to call upon him and ask the Lord to strengthen you. Ask the Lord to guide you, to give you the wisdom that you would need every single day. Many would say that these days are strange nights. And the reality in the midst of this pandemic that seems to be just going from one mutation and evolving and manifesting into one thing after the next, it is enough to cause us to be anxious and fearful, not wanting to leave our homes day by day. But the comfort that we all have in God's word is that he is with us every single day. And we do not have to be fearful the Bible states, do not worry about what you shall eat or what you shall drink. 
your heavenly Father is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. So even as I am sharing this afternoon, there may be so much going through your mind. You may be dealing with personal situations and personal challenges, but God has given you a gentle reminder that there is nothing too hard or nothing too big that he cannot handle. He is there with you right now. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 it states, He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20, Lo, I am with you even to the very end of this age. Romans chapter 8 verse 31, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Psalm 119 verse 50, This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promises, they give me life. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to 2, a very familiar, well-known scripture. It states, For everything there is a time and there is a season under heaven. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's a time to plant and there's a time to pluck up that which was planted. And one thing about a season, despite how dark, despite how grave or painful a season may be, no season can last forever. It comes to an end. And the season that you may be in this afternoon may be one of pain, one of sorrow, but I want you to know as the Bible states, weeping may endure it for a night, but joy, it comes in the morning. And this season shall pass, and your joy will be standing right before you. Romans chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, it states, For none of us lives unto himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this is the end, that Christ died, and he lived again, that we might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The final verse I share with us, and I close momentarily. Verse 16, it states, But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. They were prevented from recognizing that Jesus was standing beside of them. They were walking, they were journeying one day, sad, depressed, in a season of grief. And Jesus was standing right there, but they did not know he was there. Beloved, could it be sometimes that in a season, God is right there and we are not aware? He protected us, he shielded us. And we are not aware sometimes of, of, of the moments, how he protects us when we, when we are driving day by day, how he covers us on the job, how he's with us at home every single day. Our dear beloved Brother Winston, he lived his life, and he's gone on at this point. But all of us, we remain behind. It is known as life expectancy, the time frame or the time period in which someone will live and to the point that they will die. And no one in here knows when that time will come. Just imagine how amazing that would be if you know that you would live up to 95 or you would live up to 55, then you're able to prepare yourself. Uh, you're able to prepare your mental health when that loved one will go on. You're able to call all your friends and your family and say, well, tomorrow the Lord is calling me home at four, but it doesn't happen that way. We don't know when the time or the hour will come. But what does the word of God state day by day we must make our calling and our election sure. While well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed at this time, and we are all reflecting upon our lives. The Bible says it's accounted unto man to die, and then the judgment will come. Beloved, heaven is a real place, and hell is also a real reality. But all the Bible states that we must do in order to be saved is to believe in our hearts that God rose Christ from the grave and we shall be saved. 
As a close, perhaps it may be someone here, not by chance or a coincidence, and you do not have a personal relationship with God. Perhaps you're in a season that everything seems to be falling apart. You need guidance, you need direction. God wants to turn that situation around. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to help you. He wants to uphold you day by day. Perhaps you never ask the Lord forgiveness of your sins, but he's given someone another chance and another opportunity to make your calling and your election sure. So if there's about one or two persons in here before it closes, and you would say, Pastor, pray for me. I need the Lord to help me in this season. I cannot do it on my own. I need the Lord to guide me day by day. If that is you, would you just slip that hand in here? I will pray for you. You may take it down. If there's but one person, yes, ma'am, I see that hand. I see that hand. You may take it down. Yes. Is there another person? I want to pray for you as we close. Yes, I see that hand. God wants to do something new in your life. And it starts by you just asking him for forgiveness and welcoming the Lord into your life. So for the final time, is there another person? Would you just slip that hand in the ear and would you take it down? Yes, I see those hands. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, as I come before you this afternoon, I ask forgiveness of my sins and I repent before you, Lord. Lord, I acknowledge I cannot do it on my own, so I'm calling for your help. I'm calling on your grace. Father, I need your provision. Help me, Father. I receive you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You said that prayer and you meant it. I want you to know that God is with you and he's going to help you every step of the way. Before we sing the recessional hymn, I want to invite the immediate family to stand at this time. I want to pray for you before we sing the recessional hymn. Can the family members stand at this time? Father, I thank you, Lord, for the family that is present here this afternoon. Lord, I ask right now with your loving arms that you would cover them. Father, you would strengthen them. I ask right now, God, for their mental wellness to be uplifted in this season. Father, your word states that you would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you. Touch their minds right now, Father. Touch their hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would cover them even now from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Father, bless them. Lord, watch over them. Lord, I pray for greater unity and togetherness in the family like never before. And I pray, O oh God, that you would help them in the season of bereavement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I invite everyone to stand at this time as we now sing our recessional hymn, It Is Well With My Soul.
Testing one, two. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord give, and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Behold, they show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. For as much as it has pleased our Heavenly Father, in his wise providence to take unto himself our beloved Winston Stanley Davenish, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, whom shall change the body of our humiliation and fashion it anew in the likeness of his own body of glory. Amen. in Jesus for our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often 
sing the hymn, The Day Thou Give It Lord is Ended. Let's now sing the hymn, Great 
is thy faithfulness. Now sing the hymn to God be the glory.
let's now sing the final hymn in the suite by and by.
Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Concerned about you, he knows. 